welcome back to the Covenant Eyes podcast. I am one of the hosts, Karen Potter, joined today by Brandon Clark. Hey, Brandon. Hey, Karen. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. You know, we're always doing awesome every time we open these podcasts because we <laughs> love doing the podcast. We have amazing guests. We bring together all sorts of people that are serving people in different ways to help them overcome pornography and other challenges. And it's just so good to be doing this kind of work. I love it. It really is. And our guest today, I mean, he's got a plethora of experiences from chess playing to army veteran to physicist to a former professional heavyweight boxer. I mean, Whoa. holy cow, <laughs> what hasn't this guy done? Uh, which means that he's had a lot of experience you know, when it comes to training, fighting against addiction, and also in helping others break free and find freedom from the things that they're struggling with. So I'm really excited to have him on, Karen, to talk a lot about his experience and how he's helping others. Yeah, awesome. Well, let's not waste any more time and go ahead and introduce today's guest, Ed Lattimore. How are you today? And thank you for joining us. I am fantastic. Thank you guys for making the time and, and fit me in your busy schedule as well. Awesome. Well, you're tuning in from hot and sunny Sarasota, Florida. So thanks for, you know, traveling and, and jumping in. I know that's always hard. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. It's, it's, I'm, I'm cool right now because I'm inside, but yeah. I'll go back out and brace the heat soon enough. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and uh, just, you know, give them a good primer on what you do to help people out there. So um, I am I'm Ed Lattimore and I guess my my kind of claim to fame, if we want to talk about like how people initially found me out, I always say it, it's boxing, but I look at where my, my notoriety was when I took my last fight and where it is now. And so I have to honestly say a lot of people found me through my writing on different subjects, particularly uh, addiction, not just with pornography. I know this podcast focuses on that, but also with alcohol. And what you find is when you, you deal with those two kinds of addictions, and I like to put them in in two different categories somewhat, uh, what, you, what you see is a, a complete picture to help someone deal with something that they have no control over. And that is really become a, a source of, of enjoyment. Um, I used to actually, you know, I used to, to charge and run these groups. And now I'm just like, I hear just the gods, you know, here they go work with them, uh, use them. And, and hopefully you get a, you get something out of them that can help you that perhaps you couldn't find anywhere else. That's incredible. And I was yeah. kind of reading your, your biography and just kind of your history you know, and you you had a rough start in life. Like you grew up and it was, it was not easy, right? Do you want to walk us through a little bit of your history and that journey that you took and then how alcohol addiction and other addictions kind of led you to where you are today? Because you went through those troubles and tribulations and it led you somewhere beautiful today where you're at. Yeah. You know, it was funny. This stuff is all like super fresh in my, in my mind because I'm writing, I guess my memoir, which is the best yeah, I, I I never wanted to write a memoir, but but when my agent got a hold of my manuscript, he goes, "This is the book you need to write, not this other one. Let's focus on that one." So so I'm, I'm pulling a bunch of these experiences that that had a a formative, to say the least, uh, impact on on what my life is now. And you know, you, the the rough start you spoke of. I was born in the projects, uh, public housing. To, to a single mom raised in poverty. And, and that comes with, with a lot of negative externalities, as they say in economics, that I could not control. Now, I did, I did a, a good job of, of hitting off, heading off some of the worst ones. But, you know, just because something doesn't make itself known acutely doesn't mean there's, there's not a chronic underlying a degradation that's taken place. And a lot of that didn't manifest until I got away from the constant support and we'll call them positive peer pressure of a lot of the friends I made in high school. I went to a high school outside of that neighborhood. So, you know, in my 20s, that's when, when the addiction really kicked in on both fronts because, 
you know, I always tell people, you know, when you look at somebody who's an addict, what you're looking at is somebody dealing with trauma, without a doubt. Uh, a lot of loneliness, a lot of self-doubt, a lot of self-esteem issues, a lot of inability to, to cope in general with the stress of life. Because, you know, no one taught you. you. You found these tools to help you. And maybe at some point you didn't use them to a dangerous amount. But, you know, that's where we, we end up with. But addiction is now you do use them as a dangerous amount, way past the point of any uh, diminishing value. So, but that that's kind of in a nutshell, you know, rough upbringing, upbringing leads you to ways to cope. And then the ways to cope end up taking over and causing new problems that you have to face in the future. If you want to, if you ever want to move forward, which, which I think I've done a great job. of. You had a very successful boxing career. 13, one and one was your record. And you know training, you know discipline, because you wouldn't have been successful without those two in the ring. How do you think that plays into both your personal experience in battling the addictions that you faced, but then also for our listeners in battling the addictions that they face? Well, um, confidence breeds confidence, right? And so when you, when you when you do something well, it doesn't matter really what it is, at first at least. But when you do something well, you feel like you can do uh, any other thing well, and you you start to become you you trust yourself more to take on difficult things. So that's where we you know after you do one thing successful, then you scale up and you go. I did this. I can do something a little harder, a little harder, a little harder, a little more difficult. Uh, fighting, uh, fighting is, you know, I, I talk about this all the time, how this influenced so many other areas of my life, because it's not like I walked into the boxing gym and I was this, this standout guy. I, I struggled. It was hard, but I, I stuck with it and got better, better, better. And before I knew it as an, you know, as an amateur and a national champion and a, and a top ranking in the country and the sponsorships. And I said, wow, I went from scratch to this. So I'm like, okay, I can do this. And that affects, you know, affected how I decided to approach learning, how I decided to approach sobriety. I said, okay, if I can do these things, why can't I do these things? You know, I don't get hit. It's not exhausting. Let's let's go go for that. So so like to port that into general advice for anyone, I think I think an underrated component of self-improvement is doing something because it's difficult. Uh, I, I just read a great newsletter by a buddy of mine, Nat Elias, and he, he has this, he starts it off like, you know, if you take calculus, your math teacher, uh, you, you'll ask your math teacher, like, why am I taking calculus? And he might say, you'll use it sometime in your life. Uh, but that's probably not really true for calculus. The real benefit is that it's hard as hell. And if you get through it, you go, wow, I got through something really difficult. And then there's like the peripheral benefits of problem solving, uh, analytical ability, analysis, things like that. But the real benefit is that you did something hard. And so you go do something hard and you you come away with that confidence. And I think a lot of people, uh, when they fall into addiction in the first place, uh, confidence is, is one of the first things, if not the first thing kind of to go almost by definition. Uh, so if you can get that back in some way, then you go, all right, I, I did this and it ain't the same as that, but degree wise, it's challenging enough. And I pushed myself, I mustered, I pulled from within when things weren't going well and I made it through. So that's, uh, really the benefit of the training and how that crossed over to me and how I think other people can take those ideas and use them to, to beat whatever battle they're facing in their life. I love that fighter mentality. I think we need that when we're, you know, when we're facing an addiction or something we're trying to overcome or change, you know, Covenant Eyes, we talk a lot about when we're replacing our bad habits, uh, we have to find good ones to replace the bad ones. And so, you know, part of that is building confidence in other areas and positive places. So I, I love that you're talking about that. And I love that fighter mentality. Like we need that. Um, and for those of us that are in Christ and our followers, like, we know that our confidence comes from being a follower of Christ. And so that's important to us as well. But of all the topics you could talk about, Ed, uh, one of the topics you take on is porn. 
Um, <laughs> is this something <laughs> that fell into your lap? Was this something that you felt that? No, nah, you, you know what happened? <laughs> um, the, <laughs> I When I first started my website at Lattimore.com, uh, one of the, I had to figure out kind of what I was going to write about. Well, that that's why it's at Lattimore.com and not like boxing.com or chess.com or physics.com or sobriety.com, whatever, right? It's it's all stuff that I wanted the site to follow my journey and what I was, whatever I was interested in at the time. And, and it, it's been true to that. Well, one of the things I was dealing with and was interested in is like, getting off of porn. I wrote about that before I wrote about getting off of sobriety. And like, that's probably a, if you want to talk like things that ex exposed or expanded my, um my brand and how people know about me, my talks about sobriety and, and my, my, my book about it and all that, that is, is probably not probably definitely um bigger than any of the material I put out about getting off of porn. But I wrote that because I was I was just um, I wanted to help guys out. And, and I also felt like my suggestions were counterintuitive. Some of them, at least, you know, some of them are very obvious. But I, I thought there was there was some um, some counterintuition. And whenever whenever that exists, I'm like, OK, I have something to share. Now I notice some gold here because a lot of people aren't aren't thinking this way. So rather than rehash what everyone else is saying, here's something new. So I wrote that article and that article, <laughs> uh, every time I share it on social media, I think back to this old Chris Rock joke mm -hmm. and Chris Rock, he talks about, uh, he was the host of the, of the MTV music video awards way back when Chris Rock was huge. This was like in the nineties and, and he's the host and he mentions the Spice Girls who were up for a bunch of awards and he's like, Spice Girls sold 10 million records. And I can't find one person who admits to buying one. <laughs> the Spice Girls are like heroin. You know somebody's using it, but you just not no one comes clean about it. So I looked at the stats <laughs> whenever I shared that article. And let me tell you, minimal, I, I've got a pretty big Twitter presence, minimum retweet. But I can see the stats. Like I can see people are really reading it. Like, it's one of the most engaged things that I put out. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, here's a, here's a need here. And, and, and people are using this information. And then I, and then I really started to dig into it because I wrote a follow-up article uh, about it, you know, signs you're addicted to porn. And in that one, I went and dug into the research and, and you know, I'm, I'm 80, ugh, 38, not 83. I'm 38. <laughs> uh, that means that, that I am, I am a pure blooded, Right, heart in the middle, no debate about a millennial. And one of the defining characteristics of millennials is that we didn't have social media in high school. We didn't really have we had the internet, but it wasn't like it wasn't like this where I, you know, I sat down and I don't even wire my computer to run it. Uh so high speed wireless, none of that, no, no handheld devices. Uh it was it was for all intents and purposes the Stone Age, right? And I didn't realize like how ubiquitous porn had become until I looked at those stats and I looked at how destructive uh, it was. Like, like psychologically, it's, it's very easy to go, you know, or rather, I think it's very easy to, to get to the conclusion that if you watch a lot of porn, you will have problems in your life, right? But when I was coming up, it was it was hard to watch a lot of porn because, you know, first off, you had to, you, you had to acquire it. That was the the big challenge right there, and acquiring it meant you know one of your buddies had a dirty magazine or VHS tape, but the VHS tapes that were super colorful, like like nobody's hot nose, <laughs> and you couldn't just go pick them up. They were they weren't sold at Target or something. You had to go to an adult video store, and nobody wants to be seen coming out of those. Plus, you got to be like over eighteen anyway to get in them. Uh, the, the game's changed now, though. And so now you get these guys getting introduced to this stuff younger and younger because because you know, the Internet's everywhere, like everywhere now. I remember they used to say, you know, learn how to do your math. You won't always have a calculator. Psh, not only do I always have a calculator, I've got, I know everything, or rather I have access to everything yep. in the palm of my hand, right? And and really no one's lost more in in that progress 
than than I think young men because because you know with with porn being everywhere, it being high speed, high def, uh, there being so much of it that you know effectively all the porn is free. You know, one of the things I, I say in that article is is you know you're addicted when you start paying for porn because there's no reason to pay for it given how much stuff is out there. They, you know, the, the the boldness of these guys, um, I think X video or something like that, they they put out their their year and report on porn. And this is one from like it was like in 2018. And they were saying that if you started watching all the porn on our site before the slaves were free, like the year the Civil War started, and somehow all you did was watch porn, you would not be halfway done <laughs> by the time 2018 wow. rolled around. And and just seeing those stats and then finding out like the the rate of, of ED is 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 increasing, but in particular in the in the younger age groups, I'm like, you know, it, it's it's a big problem in as far as I'm concerned. And then, you know, something else I just discovered too in terms of this problem. Um you 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 like to think being a rational person, because this is this is a rational thought. It goes, okay, you're you're you know putting yourself out on the screen. It's crazy, it's not really something I do, but it's your choice. Come to find out, it ain't always that way either. There's a lot of human trafficking that goes mm-hmm. on with this this as well. And and that really broke my heart because uh uh fight the new drug. They they have this they have this series and they were interviewing survivors of um I think it's called Girls Do Porn or something was the site. But they were basically trafficking these women and forcing them into this stuff and threatening them. To, and, and, and the girl was on there being interviewed and she says, you know, if you look at it, it you know, it looks like it was consensual, but it was in no way, shape or form. And, and that, you know, you want to talk about a paradigm shift. I, I think, of you know, you, you're not going to get through to everybody, right? But but you look at all the tools you have to get through the guys, and I think that's one of the most underused tools to to, to mention it. That, that you know you can be without even knowing it, complicit in the destru- like the true destruction of someone's life. Yeah. I mean, because it was, I I'm I'm probably not probably I'm 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 realist here. Look, man, some people want to see a buck and they're gonna do it, and that's a buck you don't need to have any skills for, and and that is your own choice. But like, if if you reach into if you but what's that old analogy that, that Trump used when he was running for office about the illegal immigration? He goes, you know, you you take a bag of M and M's, and one of them is poison in the whole bag. You don't know which one, and you reach in, and you eat them. Are you are you still going to do that? Like, is that going to be the, the the action you take? Knowing that one of them is going to kill you. He goes, okay. I mean, your odds are pretty low, but there's that one. And it's the same way you look at porn. It's like most of them probably aren't being trafficked. But we know that exists. So why would you want to, you know, deal with that? And and there there are there are so many problems with the high speed internet introduction of, of pornography. Uh, and that really is just just one of them. But but the there there's so many I say, you know, this is a big it's a big deal. And I may as well put out content to help guys. I've got I've got a few articles on my site uh from that uh now. Just seeing that that it's a uh it's it's a it's a highly searched out topic. It's um it's it's one that if you can if you can it's like alcohol, right? If you can get people to stop drinking as much, you solve a bunch of other problems that you you weren't really thinking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I think porn is is no different. If you can get people to to, to stop, if you can get guys, if you can hold, at the very least hold the kids off. Uh, you can stop a whole bunch of problems before you know that we weren't even thinking about. Agree with that, and yeah. you know I'm so thankful for your your real life, like this is the real life stuff that people are going through. And you're just kind of exposing that to our listeners because there's a lot of people out there that have been on that same journey and they can relate so much to what you're saying. So I appreciate you sharing that and sharing content too, to help people understand, like, first off, you're not alone. And like this, we can overcome this. You know what I mean? Like there's a way out. (laughs) I ran, 
I ran uh, three iterations of the, this group, and then for, for other reasons, I decided to, to not. But but in this group, you know, I'm uh, it's a twelve week challenge. Guys come in, and we we work to to you know help them stay out porn. How we do it, you know, a weekly call and a message board and all that good stuff. And and one of the things that that really stood out to me is how many guys are just afraid to reach out. And are afraid to talk about this because because this is one way that the 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 the, the booze at least not the other drugs but booze is very similar to porn mm-hmm. and that there's a there's a societal ex, um, acceptance. I always say that the booze is the one drug where if you don't do it, people think you have a problem. Porn is very much close to that with with the majority of young men it's like at the very least no one goes oh you watch porn what's wrong with you or rather you know some people do but but the majority don't so when you reach that point where you you have a real problem and you recognize it because it's not like i'm I'm fishing on the internet looking for these guys they come to me like yo i need some help and i don't want to deal with this uh, there's no one to really reach out and talk to about these things. So one of the cool things about having my platform and, and being being who I am is that I can do that. But 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 my my cred as a as man is is established. Like you can't can't say anything to me, right? So I can be a voice uh, for people, or at the very least, be a lighthouse. Is probably a better way to put it. They go, okay, there's a rock. All the rest of the shore is rocky, but there's a place I can go and get some help and talk to some cats. And figure this thing out. Here's some resources, some free stuff, some paid stuff if I want to. Um, but either way, there's 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 help. It's it's not it's not insurmountable, and I'm not alone. Yeah, I love that. As we wrap up our time together, where can people go if they want to find more information? If they want to read these blog articles, I know you have another resource out there to help people quit porn. Can you just give us the details on that? Yeah, so there's, there's right on my website, uh, free resources, and and you check it out. I'm I'm I haven't figured out what I'm going to rename the title, but but right now, if you go to my website, uh, it'll it, you'll see in the free resources section a a god a compendium, and you can you can check it out. And and really, the god is put together. It's not just my ideas, right? That that be be cool enough i think anyhow but the god is taken from the first cohort and has a lot of the feedback from the guys that were in that cohort on um, what worked and we, we really doubled down on that on the, the next two cohorts to help guys you know one guy's married now he had never had a girl which i which i thought was great uh, by getting getting things together another guy you know is setting a better example for his family better relationship with his wife um so these the the ideas put together in, in the very free resource might i add very free is that you know that they've they've been tested they worked you know i gathered the data put it out there and, and now uh, it's on it's on my site and if people want to check it out go for it and then all the articles on my site if you go to my site in the category uh, under uh, addiction you'll see not just my articles about about getting off porn, but also uh, getting off alcohol as well. Awesome. Well, our, we'll put all the links into our show notes for all of our listeners out there that might be driving in the car thinking, oh my gosh, I didn't get that website or I don't, <laughs> <laughs> we understand, but you will be able to get all those links in the show notes. So make sure you click on those and check out any of Ed's blogs, resources, just he's got a wealth of information. And even his personal story is just, it's inspiring to see how He's had, you call them different lives or different stages of your lives. I love that yeah. because we all go through that, right? I mean, there's just different stages that we go through and I love that. So thank you for sharing with us today, Ed. We appreciate it. Hope to have you back again sometime soon. And to all of our listeners out there, God bless. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye.